Hey everybody! Welcome to another episode of Crime Skillers, Cults, and Beer. And Beer. True crime from the point of view of two crazy Florida men. And I'm crazy Florida man Bill. And I'm crazy Paul. <laughs> from Florida. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So I wonder if anybody picked up the hint that I dropped at the very end of BTK part three. When oh, about I having the monkeys. Yeah. Maybe wanting a sub. Because mm, yeah. <laughs> I told him I was going to make him wait. So I wonder if anybody figured out, oh, he said that he wanted a sub. Maybe he's going to do Jared from Subway. <laughs> yeah. Get some fast food. <laughs> <clears throat> I'm telling you, man, after going through this episode, I can't, I, I don't know if I could ever eat at Subway again, but we'll get to that. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, anyway, this one's long. Well, not as long as BTK three, but still, um, no, I just, re I just recently went to Subway like yeah, three, about three weeks ago and I didn't have the bread. I decided to get one of those, you know, the bowls you can just. Do the yeah. bowl or you do the, the protein the, bowls is what they call yeah, them. The protein bowls and those those are actually pretty decent I'm like yeah but, but but the thing about so if, like for one thing there's there's that study about tu their tuna subs but not tuna it's like very little actual tuna and and a tuna sub at subway very um not to mention the fact that you know you're standing in the line and everything you, you're looking at the um at all the stuff that they have because it's right in front of you. Have you ever looked at the eggs that go that go on their whatever sub you know sandwich that has the eggs in it? Those things look absolutely revolting. Mm -hmm. and yeah. The same I, thing with their um. Doesn't even look real, huh? I'm like, it doesn't even yeah. look real. It looks like something you'd see like in the Matrix or something. You know, like what is that? Yeah. Well, it's it looks like it tastes uh, like chicken. <laughs> <laughs> and then you've. And not to mention their um their like so called Philly meat. I mean, what the, what the hell is that? That does, that doesn't even resemble Philly meat, you know? I don't know. I I, I don't know. Some I, like I said, I rarely even go anymore. Well, I've been going. Um, I've been going quite a bit, you know, yeah. lately before I before I started bringing my own food to work, so making a lot of changes lately <laughs> yeah same here same here it's like no fast food i can't tell you it's probably been a couple years since i've been to mcdonald's it's been a couple years since i've been to wendy's it's been it's been a while it's it's been some it's been a long time so yeah but. i'm not a big fan of fast food i mean wendy's hamburgers are or um mcdonald's hamburgers are absolutely disgusting Oh, I mean, yeah, yeah. it's like I take one bite out of it and it makes and it, it makes me gag. And then, um, yeah. you know, Wendy, I I, I like Wendy's burgers. They're all, they're they're okay, but their fries are disgusting. Yep. Um, a Whopper tastes very very good, but you know, they're I mean, it, it it's the best tasting fast food burger out there um <laughs> but but um but they're but uh, burger king's fries are disgusting as well and and there's something about the whopper i don't know what it is i don't know why this happens but i'm hypoglycemic and for some reason whenever whenever i eat a whopper my blood sugar plummets within like less than a half hour later i wow. don't know why that is which really sucks because the Whopper is the best fast food burger out there. Yeah. Yeah. I used to have the Whopper. This is several years ago, back 2015, 2016. Um, now I only, re only remember the date. It's like, when would, did you have your last Whopper? Well, it was on such and such a day. Um, <laughs> the only reason I remember is uh, I was living in Shanghai, Shaving, Shanghai, China for work and massive, massive city. And they had, yeah. they had Burger King. Burger King was, every, well, I wouldn't say everywhere, not like here in the West, but I saw the first time, first I saw a, 
a Burger King. I'm like, oh, American food. Yes, yes, all right. And it was different, wasn't it? Yeah, it was their hamburgers taste a hell of a lot better than it really does in the United States. Yes, their whoppers are unbelievably good. Um wow. Yeah, it's, it's something if about you're in it. Shanghai. If you're in Shanghai, get one of those, freeze it for me, and then send it to me. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> and then when I, you know, and living there for a while, I, I realized they get a lot of their dairy and a lot of their beef from Australia. So, oh, so it's really, ding, really, good, dingo. really good products and stuff like that. So I had to, I had, I didn't, you don't see the triple, you don't see the triple Whopper here in the States very much unless you ask for it. They will, they will make you one. They'll like, make it. Yeah. It might cost 40 bucks. <laughs> but, um, I, I oh, had speaking to, of it's like whew, that's a massive burger. Speak, yeah, speaking of forty bucks, don't even get me started on Five Guys. Their <laughs> um, their burgers aren't bad, but they're expensive as hell. They're, they're, I've I've been to freaking sports bars and paid less for a burger than I did at freaking um, Five Guys. Yep, and it's like, but they give you all these fries. So so it's just like, okay, what are they doing? Charging you a quarter for every fry they give you? Is that why it's so fucking expensive there? Yeah, I think it's the carbs. I think they charge you a dollar per carb. <laughs> <laughs> Just for the fries. <laughs> I, I, I've i probably only been to Five Guys about 10 times in my life. But um, but I went um, last year for like probably the first time in like six years or something like that. Yeah. And I couldn't believe it. It was like $23, $24 just for a burger, fries, and a Coke. Yeah, I'm like, are you kidding me? And then they wrap it. Then they wrap it. it you have to eat it like right then because they wrap it in aluminum foil. Mm -hmm. and so if you don't eat it right then, it's soggy. The yep. bun is soggy if it's if it's wrapped in that aluminum foil for more than five minutes. Yeah, if it's in yeah, if it's in there for just a moment, it's just soaking up all that juice from that bread. And mm -hmm. I'm like, uh, and the steam, yeah, and the oh, steam yeah. as well. Yeah. So yeah. uh, it's like same with the fries. Too. Yeah, same with the fries. Yeah. I mean, if you don't eat those fries, they ain't gonna be crispy. Very done. No, and then I mean their 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 food isn't bad. Their fries are are good. The burgers are good. I mean they they taste like how you would cook it. They taste like what it would taste like if you cooked it on a frying pan at your house and didn't season it. Yeah, yeah. that's what that's exactly what they taste like, which is pretty good burger, really. Mm -hmm. But. But twenty five dollars, <laughs> yeah. Uh, it come on, uh, yeah. It's that five guys do better, do better. Seriously, mm -hmm. yeah. If I'm gonna pay twenty five dollars for a for a burger, I'm gonna go to like a Ford's garage, or I'm gonna go to like Buffalo Wild Wing, or something like that, where I know I'm getting a really good freaking burger. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> or freaking Hooters. That way you can at least get the freaking scenic route. Yeah. <laughs> Go to scenic route for your burgers if I'm going to pay that much. Man. Twin Peaks. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> <sighs> anyway. All right. Well, this opening digression is kind of on topic because we are talking about Subway. Yes, which I is a fast food, food restaurant. Dive into the yeah, the, uh, <clears throat> yeah, yeah, and it's a little. I I knew about what had happened, what Jared was, and all that stuff. I knew about it, but I had no idea he was as depraved as what I found out when you know in putting this episode together. <laughs> mm. <laughs> it's a lot worse than I knew. And really? you know, yeah, a lot worse. <laughs> um, I'm not going to give a trigger warning because this is a true crime podcast. You don't need a trigger warning. Exactly. You should you know there's going to be bad shit in it, but mm -hmm. this, but it's a lot worse. It is a lot worse than I thought that it was. I had no idea. I knew he'd gotten arrested for messing with kids, but I didn't know the extent of it. <laughs> Neither. So. So everybody remembers Jared Fogle, right? The Subway spokesperson who was 400 pounds plus and he ate nothing but Subway subs for a year and dropped 250 pounds. Well, lot. if you're not, yeah. 
if you're not familiar with this story other than seeing his goofy face on the subway commercials, which I don't see how that would be possible because um, the story was huge. I mean, mm. like I said, I, I knew about it, but it, it was bigger than Jared was before he started eating Subway. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, but anyway, so just, just grab a, grab a beverage, um, get maybe some chicken wings or a steak or anything but a sub mm-hmm. and, and get comfortable and get ready for some creepy shit. Jared had a very dark side of his personality. He liked young girls and he would use his fame and fortune to facilitate that desire to the point that he was even using his so-called charity to fund it. He didn't even try to hide it. He had everybody fooled. Even Oprah loved him. The Muppets loved him. President Bush loved him. John Cena, LL Cool J. And the list goes on and on and on. He's rubbing elbows with just about everybody who was anybody at during that time. He was every bit as big as they were, if not bigger. And I mean, like in popularity, not size. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he did that commercial with John Cena. He should have done the commercial with like one of the like extremely fat wrestlers and be like, hey, I could I, I could help you out, too. And then have the wrestler going. Arr. Yeah. You calling me fat? <laughs> right. Get uh, missed yeah. opportunity. Missed opportunity there. Missed opportunity. But oh well. Actually, you know what? I kind of feel I feel bad for the celebrities that did pal up with him. Oh, I know. Because yeah. because of what he was. So yeah. Subway did know about it and they tried to cover it up. And Jared had 14 victims that we know of. So, warning. This episode might turn you into a Jersey Mike's customer. Now, what was the name of that other joint? What was the name of that other joint? Um, Never mind. Quiznos. No, the, the Jersey Mike subs are much better anyway. For example, their Jersey Mike sub has tuna sub actually has real tuna in it. You're yeah. welcome, Mike. It's free, free sub, maybe a sponsorship. Yeah. Yeah. Although I do miss, I do miss Quiznos though. They had some good food there. That'll be their sub- and I love- subtitle, like real food. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I love those those commercials that Quiznos came out with with the rats and all that stuff. Those are great. <laughs> those are hilarious. <laughs> we yeah. love you subs because they are good for us. <laughs> they got a pepper bar. <laughs> uh. So, so anyway, go to Jersey Mike's. What was the name of that other wait, one? Yeah, wait, we're from Florida. We're from yeah. Florida. Pub sub, man. Pub sub. Pub sub. Pub sub. God dang, I forgot about Go get yourself a pub sub. Pub sub. Pub sub. Publix has a pepper bar, too. Yeah. (laughs) Now, Publix does make some really good subs. Yeah. Fried chicken, too, but I think we covered that on a different episode. Yeah. So let's let's start from the beginning, shall we? There's a lot to unpack with this chucklehead. Yeah, although we're gonna try to keep this at one episode after you know, after three weeks of BTK, we should probably wait a little while before doing another multi part episode, you think? Mm-hmm. Especially when it comes to Prime- poetic reading. <laughs> <laughs> Primary source of this is the documentary Jared from Subway Catching a Monster. It's on Discovery Plus. No, wait. Is it Discovery Plus? I found it on Amazon. I can't remember if it's on Discovery Plus or not, but I, I found it on Amazon. But I also access Discovery Plus from Amazon, so I don't know. Mm. Um, Jared Forgel was born August 23rd, 1977 in Indianapolis, Indiana. Great. He's, he's a Virgo. He's born... <laughs> Day day one of Virgo season. But 
he's an August Virgo. September Virgos are the best, and everybody knows that. <laughs> <laughs> um, he had a normal upbringing. His father was a doctor. His mother was a teacher. He had a younger brother and sister. Good loving family. As a as a child, he was the loner, nerdy kid. And around sixth grade, he started putting on weight fast, and uh, he was the heaviest kid in his middle school, even likely outweighing some of the adults as well. He was between 250 and 300 pounds in middle school. Wow. He was a big yeah. boy. By the time he graduated high school, he was 400 plus pounds. And everybody knows that the fat kid gets bullied mercilessly, especially if it's a fat kid who can't fight. Yeah. I, I remember a kid in high school that was, or junior high that was huge. He was probably in the 200 plus pound range and he was barely 5'7. But he was popular. Why? Because if you messed with him, he'd kick your ass. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he transferred in during the school year, and I think I think he was in eighth grade. And like within the first week that he was there, two punks from the football team jumped him after school. And this kid beat both of their asses badly. And mm -hmm. I I witnessed this. I <laughs> And from, from that point on, nobody messed with him. And the following year, he was an offensive lineman on the football team. Yeah. Yeah. So and, he, he, and, was, he, was, he was auditioning. Yeah. And he was even on the team in high school. But, you know, but Jared wasn't this kid. Jared was the kid who got bullied and went home crying more often than not. Mm. <laughs> Jared had no friends. So he found solace in food, cheeseburgers. Mm. Yeah. Uh, and he, he ate as much of it as, as he could. And in, in college at Indiana University, he was at his largest, approaching 450 plus pounds. A doctor told him that he was going to die young if he didn't lose the weight. Um, a student publication in the, the college called the daily student featured an article called from thick to thin, and it featured a slim and attractive Jared Fogel. People who knew him, but hadn't seen him in a while, couldn't believe it. And Jared had become a local celebrity. He had dropped 245 pounds in less than a year. And he would eat twice a day, a turkey sub in the afternoon and a veggie sub for dinner. And I'm not sure that that, it's the healthiest diet, but I'm no nutritionist. Yeah. I do know that if I eat a turkey sandwich or a turkey sub from Subway, I'm hungry again pretty soon after I eat it. A Jersey Mike sub or a pub sub stays with me longer. Mm -hmm. Pub sub. Pub sub. Pub sub. Sponsor us, Publix. Sponsor us. <laughs> yeah. Ching, ching. So Subway found out about this and they sent a camera crew to, um, to interview Jared for a commercial. And even before that first commercial, Jared had landed his first girlfriend who later became his fiance. He was actually happy for the first time in his life. The commercial broke and people fell in love with him overnight. And he clearly wasn't an actor, which made him seem real to everybody. Um, you know, he, he clearly did do this. This wasn't some subway conspiracy where he had a nutritionist behind the scenes working with him. Although it was a plain sub with no cheese, no mayo, just turkey and veggies. And it was a six inch sub, not a 12 inch. And so he started. Yeah. So himself. he's, yeah, I was just going to say that he's basically starving himself. Yeah. Um, because, you know, and subway's food is not the most nutritious that there is available i mean jersey jersey mics or, or pub sub is going to be a lot more nutritious than mm. anything that you're going to get at subway absolutely or even quiznos too i don't i think that those commercials with the the rats i think that ultimately i think that was the death knell for quiznos because Probably. i loved those commercials but i know an awful lot of people who thought they were disgusting <laughs> right I thought they were great. I loved those commercials. In fact, <laughs> you know, I, it's like, I, I, I need to go on YouTube. I'm sure that those commercials are on YouTube. I just need to go like watch every single one that I can find because I love those commercials. They're mm -hmm. so great. <laughs> yeah. You know, they got a pepper bar. They got a pepper bar. Oh yeah. Oh. 
The subway sales climbed as a result, so Jared was hired as the official spokesperson. His life went from dull and boring to a fortune and fame overnight. He was touring the world, doing events with Subway, doing appearances where he would share his story. He became a motivational speaker, and surprisingly, he was very good at it, considering two years prior, he didn't even know how to say hi to a stranger. Uh Jared, the Subway guy, was an international sensation. He would talk to kids in middle and high schools all over the country, and the kids probably loved him more than the adults did. Even South Park portrayed him, which we'll touch on later. <laughs> Get away from oh, what, what the hell? We'll, we'll, we'll touch on it now. Yeah. Season six, episode one of South Park was called Jared Has AIDS. Oh, um, I remember she, that one. <laughs> yeah. Jerry <laughs> Mania had swept the, the country. Uh, no, I, I watched the episode. Yeah. Uh, that, that, that episode was part of my research for this. <laughs> wow. um, Jared Mania had swept the country and obviously South Park, Colorado. And Jared was coming to South Park for an appearance and the appearance is mobbed. People, oh my God, it's Jared. You know, he used to be really fat. Maybe. You, know, the, you know how Subway or how South Park does their thing. Yeah. Hartman. But the, the kid. The kids get to meet him after the appearance, and they ask Jared if he really lost all that weight by eating the sandwiches. And Jared says, yes, but he did have some help along the way. He explains that he has AIDS. A-I-D-E-S, not A-I-D-S. Mm. Of, course, of course, he met a dietitian and a trainer, and the kids, understand what, the kids understood what he meant, but nobody else did. Before too long, a long scandal tanks Jared's career. He loses his fiance and, 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 and literally everything because he, everybody thinks that he has AIDS AIDS. <laughs> um, he did the press conference saying that he, he wanted to give AIDS to all the children <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh... and and hilarity ensues. But the ironic thing is the foreshadowing there. Because of the stuff that they were saying when he, when he was like saying, oh, I'm going to give all the kids AIDS and all that stuff. And they're all obviously taking it the wrong way. It doesn't seem so far-fetched now, does it? Right. Even though he, he, didn't, he didn't have AIDS, you know, he didn't have active immune deficiency syndrome. He, mm-hmm. But still, you know, how, how would, he, how would a, kid, a child get active immune deficiency syndrome? So a yeah. little bit of unintentional foreshadowing going on there by the, by Matt Stone and Trey Parker. <laughs> yeah. Crazy stuff happens. I tell you, it's just like the Freudian slips, you know, that, you know, you might not intend something and then it becomes a prophetic, weird and unusual. I mean, look at the Simpsons. Everybody yeah. I was just going to say Simpsons so did it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, but I only brought up the South Park because, you know, if, if South Park spoofs you, you're at the top of pop culture at the time. Yep. Yep. So that, that's why I brought that up. It, it's just, you know, but so we're going to do the story in two segments separately that, that will come together at the end. Hmm. So in the fall of 2006, TV and radio personality Rochelle Herman from the Health Beat of America, a radio show in Sarasota, Florida, got a call from the American Heart Association to interview Jared. And she jumped at the chance because he was so popular and obesity was a topic that she talked about quite a bit. One of the first things that Rochelle noticed was how Jared had an ego, but who wouldn't with how drastically his life has changed, you know? Um, so she didn't think too much of it. Jared was all about helping to boost the kids' self-esteem and take control of their health as kids rather than having to deal with it as an adult. Nothing wrong with that, right? No. Seems honest. Uh, yeah. Uh. yeah. So after the interview, Jared began flirting with Rochelle. Um. She told Jared that her daughter, Angela, was a huge fan and that she really wanted to meet him. So they arranged a meeting and there are photos of said meeting and Angela, I think she was like eight at the time, I think. Um, Maybe seven. Hmm. But later there was an appearance 
at one of the Sarasota middle schools and it was a joint appearance featuring Jared and one of Sarasota's most beloved personalities, Rochelle. Before the appearance, Jared turned up his game. He was going through a divorce and he kept on flirting with Rochelle and even asking if he could hold her hand. And she wasn't receptive, but she didn't stop him either. Hmm. Um, she, she didn't say anything about it. Yeah. Um, right, right before the camera started rolling, Jared leaned over and whispered in her ear how hot he thought middle school girls are. What? <laughs> that's bold. That's freaking bold. Somebody that, th- that's some. Huh? Blah. That's bold. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I mean, well. that's somebody that thinks he's untouchable and that, that could get away with anything just because of who he is. And okay. before Rochelle could act, the camera started rolling and they even brought several students up there to meet with Jared on camera. And this whole time, Rochelle was struggling to keep it together. And she was watching Jared with these kids like a hawk. I mean, this 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 whole experience made her th- sick and she struggled with it. And, you know, this, this chucklehead is around children all the time. And to come out so blatantly and say that to a stranger... What the actual uh, fuck? Yeah. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> she knew right then that Jared had two different sides to him. The nice guy and the demon. Yeah. And she believed that he was a danger to children and she was right. And she decided to find out and get proof on her own. She couldn't go to the police because she didn't have any evidence. All she had was a hunch based on one sentence that Jared whispered into her ear. Plus, even if she did come forward at that point, nobody would believe her. One thing is like, why, why did he say that to her of all people? I don't know. Like, why would he say that to a, to a woman, someone of the opposite? A stranger. He, yeah. It's like, what? Well, uh, yeah. <laughs> and a mother at that. Yeah. Boy, this guy is stupid. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, he, but Jerry was squeaky clean. He had no arrest, not even a speeding ticket. I mean, so she needed to get Jared on tape, and, you know, admitting it. And so she went into action. Six months later, the American Heart Association set up another interview with Jared. She got a hold of Jared's cell phone number and she started calling him. And she began recording their conversations. Mm-hmm. And they started with small talk and Jared was being careful, but wound up loosening up with Rochelle. And she began pretending to be interested in him. Yeah. Set up. Finally, it began getting personal in between the two of them, but he wasn't talking about hot middle schoolers yet. Um, they agreed to meet up and he was going to be on West Palm beach soon. And so she was going to inter interact or she was going to record their in-person interactions. Now, for those of you who aren't familiar with Florida, um, Sarasota is on the West coast. West Palm Beach is on the East Coast. Mm-hmm. It's probably about a two and a half hour drive from Sarasota to West Palm. Maybe yeah, even longer yeah. than that, depending yeah, on traffic and whatnot. Yeah, and the route. <laughs> yeah. The fastest route isn't even interstate. You gotta take one of those little highways to cut across the state because if you take I-75, you're going down there to um, Naples and cutting across Alligator Alley and coming out in Miami. That, that's yeah. way far out of the way so <laughs> that's a but, common route for the Cessnas too i know a lot of pilots that usually travel that route that's about yeah hour 42 hours it's still i mean it's still a good length so yeah so she shows up at the hotel at jared's hotel in west palm and she goes up to his room with the recorder running in her purse and jared starts feeling her up and she pulled away he said it would be hot if she put her hair up into pigtails Whoa. <laughs> creepy. And she's like, he's like, will you do it for me? That creeped her out. And she decided she was going to bolt first chance she got. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> what, <laughs> what, what he had said, com- combined, what he had said at the middle school combined with the pigtail thing convinced her that he was a pedophile. You know, Jared went to the bathroom and Rochelle bolted. She got to her car and she hauled ass back to Sarasota yeah, so, so she drives from West Palm to Sarasota, 
spends less than probably less than 20 minutes in the hotel and then drives from West Palm back to Sarasota. <laughs> um, Jerry called her back asking where she, where she had gone. And Rochelle said that her kids had called something came up and she had to split. Now required photo bomb. Um, but Jared bought it and said that they would try again sometime. Before too long, they would resume their phone conversations, and Rochelle eventually got him to open up the the monster that was his real self to her. Mm. Yeah, man, I already at this point it's more in, it's more involved than what I initially knew. Yeah, yeah, I, th- you know, yeah, I, I didn't. Same here. I didn't know that he was being all flamboyant with it and ballsy and yeah, he, he just, I mean, what I thought that he had messed with a couple kids and that he got busted with child porn. I thought that was the extent of it. Yeah. That's what I thought. But it was that's just a bust. And yeah. Whatever evidence he left behind it, it was found and the wrong person, the right person found it and turned it in. But, yeah. Yeah. No, but no, it's <clears throat> a lot more than that. <laughs> um, she asked him what it was that turned him on about the younger women, and he actually answered this. He said, "It's their nice, pure bodies." She had gotten through to him, and in 2007, he called an opened up he, he wanted to go to fetish clubs with with her and watch other people having sex she led him even further she she asked what he most wanted to do and he said young um he said we can work on that she asked how young and jared replied middle school when girls are starting to get their boobs what? awkward he's Rochelle said nine or ten. He's and Jared said, "Yeah, that would be really hot." Yeah. <sighs> wow. Sick. Fuck. And stupid fuck too. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm glad he was stupid. Yeah. But damn. It's definitely the oh, ego. Fuck. I mean, yeah. Uh. If. if Cold water and cold water, and I'm wearing shorts. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> that never happened with beer. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, those flimsy plastic bottles that bottled water comes in. Oh, yeah. Those things are getting thinner and thinner. It's like, what the heck is this stuff made out of? Yeah. It might as well be a bag. It might be water. It might as well be water in a bag. Yeah, I just picked it up. It was a fresh a, a one that I had just opened. I picked it up, squeezed it a little bit too hard, and water right on my leg. Ah, mm. it's ice cold. <laughs> <laughs> like, like I said, that never happened with beer. Yeah. <laughs> so Rochelle decided at that point that she should go to the FBI, and she had dozens of re- recorded phone calls, but sometimes. A lot of times, rich people can make things go away. Mm. Going to the FBI was like kicking a hornet's nest. But for now, let's put a knife in that. Yeah. So with all his fame and fortune, Jared started the Jared Foundation. Not the most original name, but it's allegedly provided education and events for schools. And it was to promote healthy eating and exercise. One thing that isn't mentioned that I'm curious about is whether or not Jared spent as much time with the boys as he did with the girls. Mm. But, um, but the, the Jared foundation was just a front. I mean, when, when all of this went down and I've, I've, I'm going off of memory here, but when I, I forgot to put that, this didn't go in the, the notes, but, um, the Jared foundation made millions and millions and millions and it only paid out like several hundred thousand dollars to these various places. 
you know, the rest of it was, you know, just basically went to, to Jared and his, um, you know, and his partner who we'll meet before, you know, we'll meet in the second segment. Yeah. And, you know, it's just, you know, so he, he was just basically, it was, it was a false nonprofit. It was just, you know, he, he was just basically embezzling people and pocketing the money. Normally these foundations too, not saying, you know, only him, but a lot of these foundations too, you know, are, are shell companies as it it's it's money laundering yeah no i mean if i was going to put together a foundation like if i won like a billion dollar powerball or something like that i would start a foundation but it, the money would go to what i yeah. said that it was going to exactly <laughs> <laughs> yeah a, a non-profit is supposed to be just that a non-profit exactly i mean the most you know you're going to spend a, a pretty good lump sum to you know hire a very specific attrator mm-hmm. bookkeeper to to run the foundation administrative Promoter, cost I mean, yeah administrative yeah. cost stuff like that but yeah but all but all the money that comes out you know all i mean people have to work you yeah. have to pay them mm-hmm. but but if but all the money that it makes you know the everything other than you know operating costs has to go to what it's supposed to go to and the jared foundation was not doing that at all mm-hmm. i mean they did a little bit just to you know a little bit each year just to say, just to show that they were doing something mm-hmm. but it was bringing in a hell of a lot more than was being put out doesn't surprise me yeah <coughs> um rochelle had decided to go to the fbi with the recordings of jared saying nasty things about kids she went to the FBI f- headquarters in Sarasota and she was introduced to agent Billings and she shared everything that she had with, with Billings. Billings took the material left to show it to somebody else. And a little while later, Billings and three more agents came back into the room. The agents were blown away that somebody of Jared's stature would say that crap, whether they knew they were being recorded or not. Mm. Hell yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. It was stupid. <laughs> Yeah. Um, now remember, Rochelle has a young daughter right in that age range, yeah. <laughs> you know, and the agents agreed that Jared needed to be investigated. But since she had made these recordings without his knowledge, it was not only inadmissible in court, it was also illegal, which is yeah. that that is true. You have mm-hmm. to, if you're recording somebody, they have to be you now now these radio stations that do prank phone calls or whatever. They'll be like, um, like well, the person answers, hello, you're on the air. Uh, OK. And then they start. You know, mm-hmm. they're not going to say, yeah. hey, you're on the air. You know, they're just, you're on the air. And that, that passed, well, in the 90s, they, that was a loop. You know, that was how they got away with that. Yeah. I, I'm sure it's been changed. I, I think it's been changed now. But um, <laughs> one time on my old radio show, um, we had these guests on. They wanted to do prank phone calls. Why? This was in 2013. Like mm-hmm. when we had just started it, when I just started it and they wanted to do prank phone calls. So I called, I'm like, okay. Cause I, I knew, I knew I couldn't do anything like crazy, like was popular in the nineties, yeah. like on like what real radio did back in the day, like Drew Garabo yeah, specifically yeah. <laughs> his, yeah. his prank, his prank phone calls were great. Oh, they were really good. <laughs> really good. But, um, but so I called a Papa John's in Los Angeles. And I tried to get the, you know, to, I gave them the address to another Papa John's like two miles away. Hmm. They're like, sir, this address is another Papa John's. I was like, that's not, I'm like, okay. But I knew that I knew that I was, I, I knew that I could get in trouble if I tried, if I did something like what, Gar, you know, Garabo or the jerky boys or whatever. Oh yeah. Did, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so I, I was just like, you know, maybe I could still do something and just have it come off as a mistake, but um, that would would be like harmless. Yeah, and they yeah, they figured out yeah. that that I was calling. They figured out that I was calling with the address of another Papa John's, and it it wasn't funny. It wasn't. <laughs> as, it seemed like it would be funny, but it wasn't. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now I could have I could have done something like what the Jerky Boys or Drew Garabo or whatever. I could have done something like that. But yeah, this is Frank. Like, this is Frank. Frank Rizzo. Yeah, Frank I got some Rizzo. Rocks. I got some rocks to unload. <laughs> this is the super across the way, and I'm really pissed off. 
do you wear glasses? Without my glasses, I can't see, god damn it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> the good old days. <laughs> oh, yeah. 90s talk radio. <laughs> oh, man, yeah. Those were the days. It's the only good thing about the 90s. <laughs> yep. But anyway, hashtag, but I digress. Um, the the agents were actually talking about the possibility of Rochelle facing felony charges. Mm. And they made a deal with Rochelle. Continue getting the recordings, but do it with legal protocol. She had certain things that she had to say prior to the recording. And she also had... Um, yeah, you know, she was she was told that she had to do this or she would be charged. Oh, yeah, you know, yeah, and you know the the things that she had to say prior to the recording was back was basically like '90s radio. Like I said, you're on the air, you know, you know, just just some just something to make it legal, you know. Yeah, yeah. See, that's those are the so can she, of worms you got to open. You know that you're you got to realize you're opening up. You know, you go to the authorities, be ready. Be ready. Yeah, exactly. To, to go the whole way. No, no good deed goes unpunished. Exactly. And so the the calls become even more graphic at at this point. And Jared and Jared at this point trusted Rochelle. One time, she asked him how old the youngest girl that he'd ever been with was, and he actually said eleven or twelve. Damn. He said this knowingly and admitted it freely. He actually searched these girls out, did the act, and and then and then gave up the information. He he was boasting about it. Wow. <laughs> I mean, this guy really thinks he's freaking untouchable. And we're gonna get to something else soon. He knows what he's doing is wrong, and we'll we'll get to that shortly. Yeah. But the FBI wanted names and Jared said that he couldn't remember the names. And yeah, you know, it's just like, I'm, I'm, I'm hearing the words from Jared's mouth on these tapes and I, I can't help thinking, what a freaking idiot. You know, I mean, frick, you know, talk about word vomit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Rochelle was performing extremely well, pretending that she wanted to partake in this, these activities with, with, with him. Yeah, and Jared was eager to have an accomplice. He had an apprentice. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, I, I guess he, he figured if he found somebody that he can trust and you know partake in that that would also (laughs) that she she definitely wouldn't rat him out yeah yeah and and you know what i wouldn't even be surprised if if, like oh well she's all into this with me and everything if i go if i go down i can fray i can blame her Mm -hmm. have someone to go you know what i bet that's exactly i bet that's exactly what it was yeah Yeah. i bet i don't know though it, it was pretty stupid to start spewing that information out in the first place. Exactly. So maybe maybe he wasn't that smart. I don't know. Yeah. Things that make you go, hmm. Oh, yeah. Um, now, keep in mind, Rochelle's recording all of this. And if Jared found out, he has resources. And she was constantly worried that he would see through a ruse. And she was scared of what he might do to retaliate if he did find out. You know, he had enough money to make her and her entire family disappear. Yeah. Um, working for the FBI was really taxing on her family. And every time Jared would call, she would record it. And then immediately after the call ended, she had to go hand it off to the agent. Oof. And it it was at least every night, sometimes twice a night. Wow. Like there's an agent outside, just hanging outside in the bushes in the front yard. Uh, no, there you go. no. No, worse yeah. than that. She had to get in the car and, and drive somewhere in town to meet. Whoa. If if Jared called her at 3 o'clock in the morning, she had to answer, record the call, and then call up the FBI and say, hey, meet me so and meet me 
here, I've got another one for you. Yeah, like meet me down on, you know, Fifth and Washington at the subway. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I was going to say Starbucks, well, but <laughs> the subway is better. Yeah, right. But they, um, but they would, they would meet at an abandoned Toys R Us building. Uh, that was their, um, really? Thing. Wow. RIP R- Toys R Us. Huh. I liked Toys R Us. That was cool. That the was the thing place. is, yeah, I, I, yeah, I'm not like a big, like, action figure collector or anything like that i'm not i I, you know i don't i don't buy decorations per se you know things should just sit sit there or whatever but i do like going into like toy stores or flea markets and stuff like that and everything just to look at all the action figures i I like to look at them it's cool i'm like oh that's cool that's cool you know (laughs) like the stuff that i have back all yeah. the new, the new cool toys. Yeah, you can't see them in the. Well, you can see a little bit of it in the the corner there in, in my picture. But I mean, the stuff that I have has been stuff that people have gotten me. I've never actually gone out as an adult. I've never gone out and bought like an action figure or anything like that. I just like to look at the stuff. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway. Um, working with the FBI was really taxing on her family. And every time Jared would call, she would immediately, and I already said that, um, her kids had no clue what was going on. They knew something bad was happening, but they didn't know what, and Rochelle couldn't tell them. Not that she'd want them knowing anyway, you know? Right. Oh, Jared, he, he likes to hurt kids like you, Hmm. you know? I mean, they, they all knew that she was working with the FBI to help catch a bad guy. That That's all they knew. And it got to the point to where, and this is heartbreaking. You know, it got to the point to where the, the kids thought that somebody was targeting them specifically. Ooh. And well, one of the kids was obviously Angela, but put a knife in that. Hmm. Not, in, not in Angela in, in, in the, in the situation, in the situation. In the situation. And for clarification, there are two Angelas in this case. Mm. We haven't met the other one yet, but we will. It seemed like every call got darker and darker. Jared, on one of the calls, said that um, they should get some child porn videos and and watch them together. Oh, shit. Hell no. (sighs) He told her about a trip to Thailand, and this call haunts her. And you know, all of it does, but this one in particular was really bad. She asked him what the most unique experience that he had ever had with a young girl. Um, and he said that he said that it wasn't with a girl. He said that it was a with a, a like a um, a ten year old little. Well, little, well, not even ten years old. Little boy in Thailand. Huh. Um, he he said, uh, it, "Thailand was great. It's like you you can you get whatever age you wanted, pay the price, and it's on. You, and you can't get in trouble for it there. That that was what I was talking about when he when I said that he knew right from wrong. That he knew what he was doing was wrong because he yeah. knew it was he could get in trouble for it in the United States. He's like you can't get in trouble for it in Thailand." Well, you can, you can, you can get in trouble in the United States if you do that in Thailand. Oh yeah, and 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 somebody in the United States finds out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it don't matter. It don't matter where you're from and where you go. If you're an American and you diddle a kid in a country where it's legal in that country, and the authorities in the United States find out, you're still in trouble. Yep, and rightfully so. But he he even said that he would love um, for Rochelle to go to Thailand with him so that they could play. And I still can't believe the, that this information that he's bragging about, you know, you know, but now he's talking about a, a young, a, you know, a little boy. So nobody's safe now at this point. Yeah. Uh, uh, he talks about, 
he spoke about how amazing it was having this little boy doing things, specific things to him and him doing things to the little boy. And <sighs> I like hot dogs. Have you ever, have you ever deep fried a hot dog? I've never deep fried a hot dog. I've it's deep actually fried pretty good. like chicken wings, deep fried chicken wings. Oh yeah, that's the only way to eat chicken wings. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, uh, not no, sorry. not not yeah, not that deep fried hot dog. Yeah, you have a deep, deep fried, fried hot twink, dog. deep fried Twinkies. I've heard that. Yeah, and I've, uh, I've heard that. I've never I've never tried it, but yeah. you, but it has to be fresh oil. You can't stick a Twinkie oh, in oil that you've deep fried chicken in. What the hell? Anyway, yeah. just a little palate cleanser. A little palate cleanser there. <laughs> so Rochelle then gets him to admit that he's t- <laughs> I started gets, talking like that. You're probably like when it gets awkward, huh? I'm changing the subject. You did it first, <laughs> <the> next time. <laughs> but you're probably like you're probably like, wait, what the fuck is he talking about? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Rochelle then gets him to admit that he regularly did this type of thing in the U.S. as well as overseas. Uh, the, the things that he admitted to doing had her throwing up as soon as she hung up the phone. And I have... I can imagine she's, you know, as time goes on, she was kind of like, like bulimic. Yeah. At this point, you know. And I, I mean, because I mean, she's got guts. Just, I mean, mm-hmm. this, this, this woman's got guts to continue on. And can you imagine the like the PTSD? Well, number number one, she has to. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Oh yeah, right. she she has serious PTSD from it, which we're going to get to, but um. But she, but you know, number one, she has to keep doing it, and number two, she wants to keep doing it because she wants this fucker behind bars. Yep. You know, she was totally committed to that. She was committed to it when she started doing it. And can you but imagine it, but, not ha- not telling any you? The only people that you're having communication about this is the FBI. You can't say anything right to anybody. You can't say shit to anybody. Yeah, and and I I cover on I, I cover on the psychological aspect of that later on in the in the episode, and it's just yeah. So it's, it's just um, put yeah, a knife in it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but this operation went on for several years. Why? Because he's, even though he's admi- admitting to it, there's no actual proof. He could have just been spouting bullshit. Which is true. He could have been, but yeah, don't know. If somebody's admitting to all that shit and it's not true, I think he should be locked up just for that. Oh, I know. Yeah, yeah. Thought police. Because if you're, if you're, yeah, if you're going into that much detail about it, then you've obviously put a lot. But then again, think you know, having those thoughts isn't illegal. It's acting on them that's illegal. Mm-hmm. Yet. Uh Oh yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> I mean, I mean. <laughs> Big Brother is watching. Oh, I'm, I'm sure I'm on, on a, a watch list because of all the shit that I look up for yeah. these episodes. Well, I, I'm pro- I, my podcast probably is the seance. It's like we, we talk about some stuff on there. And, I don't know. <laughs> Conspiracies and stuff? Every now and then we touch, a, depending on the subject we're on, you know, we'll throw a little interesting nuance of, <laughs> yeah. So Conscious Radio Network at dot com and the podcast is called the seance yeah yeah <laughs> and we're now on rumble too so oh, okay rumble yeah. rumble get ready to rumble. rumble um and one of the commercials jared says i feel like i could do anything looking back on it that's kind of creepy yeah because he was right Oh. Without a victim to come forward, they had nothing. But th- this was destroying Rochelle, and the worst was yet to come. Oh. Um, Rochelle kept a private diary about her calls to Jared because, I mean, she has to let it out somehow. Yeah. 
So she came home one night and somebody had been in her office. She found ripped pages from her diary. It, her daughter, Angela, was the one that had found the diary. And it crushed the relationship with her. You know, um, Angela was angry and, and, and Ro Rochelle decided that was it. She's done. So um, in 2009, Rochelle and the FBI came up with a plan to lure Jared to Sarasota and to catch him in the act. Um, Rochelle was setting up a fake birthday party for her son. You know, I, I got to put this out there. In 2007, when mm -hmm. all of this started with Rochelle and the FBI, Chris Hansen's To Catch the Predator was still on the air. Um, why not just arrange something with him where Rochelle would promise to have a young girl waiting for him, and then when he shows up, Chris Hansen is just sitting there waiting? Yeah. You know, there, there's no reason for all these years of Rochelle polluting her mind and harming her family with this. Hi, Jared. Why don't you have a seat? <laughs> that yeah. would have been the biggest episode of To Catch a Predator that there ever was. If Chris Hansen had brought down Jared Fogel, you know, yeah, yeah. missed opportunities, missed What's opportunities. Now, how, how long, how long was this, uh, operation with the fbi and and turning over recordings how long was that three or four years wow you know something that's i, I blame the fbi for that that's that's bullshit it is you know yeah i we'll mean you're to supposed we'll to protect to the public and and but not you know freaking put the people yeah. that are supposed to help you guys freaking in jeopardy yeah i mean yeah and i, I, I touch on that too i mean mm. If, put a knife if, in it. If I'm not on a if, if I'm not on a list, I will be after this episode because of the <laughs> because of my critique of the FBI. <laughs> FBI open up. <laughs> right. Oh shit. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh. Hi, Jared. Why don't you have a seat? <laughs> that would have been great. Yeah. That would have been fucking awesome. That would have been. Uh -huh. But better late than never. They set up a sting operation, and this would prove that he was willing to cross state lines to have sex with a child. Chris Hansen could have accomplished that, too. And it mm -hmm. might have actually happened. Yes, I'm telling you that this sting did not happen. Jeez. Spoiler alert. But um, Rochelle tells Jared that this was her son's birthday party and that she was, you know, she was going to have a big party and, you know, for a bunch of kids and everything, big, huge to do. And she invited him to come. And Jared said, yes, he didn't need any prompting either. He wanted <laughs> Rochelle to invite all of his, her son's friends and all of their brothers and sisters. He wanted a huge selection. Jeez. And he said that he wanted to see all the kids checking out Ro Rochelle and her sexy bathing suit, looking at her big boobs and her nice big ass. He, he wanted to watch kids, you know, checking her out, which is, I don't know. Awkward. Kids mm. don't start checking out other kids' moms until they get to high school. Right. Oh. <sighs> anyway. Mm. Weird, yes. Creepy, yes. Awkward. Yes. <laughs> but <laughs> but Jared seals his fate. He says that he wants to watch Rochelle. Or he said that he wants Rochelle, and I quote, to watch him pound a little kid. What? Okay. That's, yeah. yeah. I, um, um, um. No comment. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh. <clears throat> <sighs> then he starts coming up with ideas for Rochelle to prepare the kids for him. And he's literally explaining to Rochelle how to groom children. He tells her to have the kids talk to Jared about sex like they talk about it at school with each other. It's like Because everybody knows middle schoolers talk about sex. And he then says that he wants to watch the kids change into bathing suits. He asks, 
and I heard all of this shit on tape. Wow. This is this is on the frick. Uh, everything that I'm quoting is on that documentary. Everything, wow. and then some. There's stuff that I left out. Huh. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> but this uh, is censored. <laughs> yeah. Hey, no, it's it's just this episode was going to be long enough, and I didn't need to really go through everything. You know, yeah. you get the you get the drift. You get. I the get gist. the gist. Yeah, I yeah yeah I get the gist. You know. <laughs> I had talked about doing this episode months ago while Todd was still a part of the show. Now Todd mm-hmm. really had a problem with covering the, the, Oh, the this kid, is kitty. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, and it, like I said, I wasn't, I had no idea the extent of Jared's depravity until I started putting this episode together for now. Cause I, I never mm-hmm. started doing it. It was just something we were talking about, you know, and it was just like, uh, okay, th- there's the, the possibility of some kids stuff in there, but think you could get through 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 it. This episode would have broken Todd. Oh. Yeah. I mean, I had to take break. I was talking with another podcaster as I was doing these notes. I was just like, I don't should, should I even put a trigger warning in the, I I had no freaking clue it was this bad. <laughs> you know, it's still it's just like uh even now, even though I've already been through the notes, you know. I've already written down the notes and everything. It's still, you know, it's, it's still it's like, ugh, what the fuck, dude? Yeah. You know? This is, yeah. Ugh. Sensitive. Mm-hmm. So he asked, there, somehow a girl from a broken home had come up in conversation. And he's like, well, what about that girl from the broken home? She, she'd probably do. And Rochelle, Rochelle, um, Rochelle said, well, she's only seven. He says, that's okay. Tell me about her. He then asked Rochelle, this is the worst. He then asked Rochelle if she'd do anything that he tells her to do. And she says, yes. And he makes her promise. She says, okay, I promise. He then asks if Rochelle will let him see her own kids naked. What? Hell no. He had That's- her kids in his sight. That's it, as if, if, if none of this, if nothing else up to this point was crossing the line, that's crossing the line. Dude, dude, if I was her at that second, I would have freaking clocked him square in the well, face. Oh, they're on the phone. Oh, they're on the phone. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> would have found a way to punch through the phone, like in the yeah. cartoon. Ah, yeah. <laughs> oh, wildy coyote stunt. Yeah. Mm. Um, now they were 10 and 11 at this point. And then he then asked her if she'd be okay with him putting cameras in their bedrooms. I mean, he's just going, he's just spewing all this crap out and it's getting worse and it's snowballing. And he, it, it, he's just talking about it like it's normal everyday bullshit for him. Yeah. And it's also like, what the f- dude, just grab a gun, put it to your foot in your mouth and pull the trigger, please. Yeah. You know? guy is freaking sick <sighs> so rochelle played along because she had to but jared schedule changed and now he would be there in three days instead of a week later what? but the fbi the fbi couldn't get ready in three days i call bullshit on that they could always get i ready. do too but i do too but once again call chris hansen <laughs> but Jerry couldn't make the original schedule. It wasn't possible. So the party never happened. And Rochelle's nearing having a, a, ner- a mental breakdown, especially once Jared set his sights on her kids, not to mention she saw him on TV multiple times a fucking day. Yeah. I would have just unplugged cable and just said, no commercials. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, one night she hit a breaking point and she went to see a friend of hers, um, Sean Ozzy Osbourne. It was Sean Osbourne, but he just he was a radio host, so he just threw in the Ozzy part. But um, he was a radio talk show host. And they they were friends, they were close, and she said that she had to talk to somebody and she chose him because of how close they were. Yeah, and she made him promise not to tell anybody. And she told him that Jared from Subway wants to see her kids naked, and if she didn't let him, he was going to kill her. 
Osborne mm-hmm. thought she was crazy, and of course, why wouldn't he? That sounds pretty far fetched, yeah. you know. Hmm. But she, she, but she couldn't tell anybody, and it was ripping her apart. Oh, you know, I, yeah. So, so, but he he said he said he's just like, well, she was so convinced, like she's either crazy or she's telling the truth. It's one or the other. Mm-hmm. But he was he wasn't sure what at that point. But he didn't report her or anything like that, you know. It, and it was probably something along the lines of just like she, she, she said, "Boom!" And just that little bit of a release right there, probably made her feel at least a little bit better for a little while, you know. Yeah, yeah. It's like I, I, I could, You have to it's tell like if somebody. If, yeah, if you're carrying something that weighs five hundred, you know, five hundred pounds, and you remove one pound of it, you're going to feel a little bit better for a little bit, mm-hmm. you know. No. Anyway. Mm. Shifting gears to 2010. Jared was getting irritated because Rochelle wasn't meeting with him in person and began contacting her less and less. And Rochelle still didn't feel safe. And she knew that kids all over the U.S. and the world weren't safe either. Mm. She was coming apart. She wanted desperately to tell somebody, but she was under an FBI gag order. So on May 13th, 2010, she went to the Sarasota Police Department and she actually turned in the FBI for not doing due diligence to close the case. There you go. And she talked with a detective about the case and her concerns about the kids, especially her own. And the detective thought she was batshit crazy until she showed the tapes. She had made backups. Good on you, Rochelle. (laughs) She had made backups. Hell yeah. The detective was like blown away. She was like, what? Holy shit. But the problem here was Jared lived in a different state and no crime had been committed in Sarasota that they knew of. Mm. Well, I mean, prob- there's, there's no evidence that anything happened in Sarasota other than a creepy whisper in the ear. Yeah. Yeah. But they believed her. And the detective spoke with the FBI who did confirm that there was an ongoing investigation on Jared. So Rochelle told the detective that she's like, I'm going to play the tapes on the radio show. And the detective said, that's not a good idea. Number one, it could scare the suspect off. Um, But it could also not to mention, it could also bring her a bunch of uh, problems because she was under a gag order. Mm-hmm. Not to mention the fact that Jared could easily put a hit on her or her kids or both, so she agreed not to broadcast the tapes. Mm. Immediate um, witness protection program. Yeah, but but still, she's violating an FBI gag order. Yeah. Uh, They're not getting- uh, I wonder if he can get a, uh, um, a district court judge to um, do something. I don't know. I, uh, I don't know, but hmm. well, this district, the FBI is federal, so I don't yeah. know. <sighs> Haven't done a yeah, unless they contacted well, this, the police department that uh, he lived in. Yeah, and we're we'll get to that in the second segment. Um. You know, here in Florida, you have Rochelle, just this, this, this lone, the lone ranger, mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> you know, and she, yeah, it's literally lone, the lone ranger. Uh, that's what I'm going to call her, the lone ranger. Um, And, she, you know, she got her like doing all of this herself and everything. But in Indiana, a freaking task force gets on board. So. I need a new guitar. <laughs> yeah, I, I I do. I I think I think I want, I think I want another seven string guitar. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I I want another one. I, I think. It just I I I just you know they're they're really seven strings really cool guitar and everything. <laughs> another palate cleanser. <laughs> there you go. Seven strings, man. Got to keep it odd. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that way it doesn't go into threes. <laughs> uh, uh, 
Uh, <laughs> one night shortly after all of this sean osborne was on the air and two men in black suits with black sunglasses came and they were beaten on the studio door yeah. here come the men in black <laughs> um yeah. with, they had fbi badges and they asked for rochelle and um yeah he's it, like like i'm on the air and so they're like we'll be back mm-hmm. so when he signed off rochelle was there and when he signed off the the um you know the the he signed off and the station went off the air for the night it was one of those that didn't run 24/7 yeah and um and they they ran out the back door and then went across the street to to the bar the FBI actually raided the radio station they took computers and anything else that they wanted they also at the exact same time ra- raided Rochelle's home and seized anything that she hadn't turned over Rochelle was told to keep her mouth shut or she would be charged with impeding an investigation. Mm-hmm. So she did what she was told. And now there's, it doesn't mention if when they raided Rochelle's house, if her kids were there at the time. Yeah. Well, I'm crazy assuming they were. And what's crazy too is she hasn't, she has yet to even do anything against the, against the gag order. Technically. Right. Other than well, she did, telling she a friend to of her. Start, but, well, she talked oh. to the Sarasota Police Department. Yeah, but the 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 police department, you know, they're they're going to follow the rules. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, they're not going to they they don't have anything to worry about from the police department. They, you know, I, I suppose somebody could have leaked it, but I I would assume that, you know, when she went to the police department the first time, I would assume that the pers- the detective she talked to. It was maybe they, they probably kept that really tightly tightly zipped. Oh yeah, yeah. So there, only there, there was probably couple, maybe yeah maybe One or only two three officers. people, a yeah. detective, the 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 chief, or whatever. You know, it it, it, it probably wasn't common knowledge. Therefore, it wasn't going to be leaked from the Sarasota police. Mm-hmm. So yeah, and she so Rochelle did what she was told, but. I think that if her kids had been there, then it would have come out in the story. True. You know, because, yeah, you know, they, they were already, you know, traumatized enough by everything that was, you know, that they were perceiving to be happening, you know, thinking that there's, you know, like a mafia hitman or something like that, like after them specifically. Yeah. You know, yeah, I feel so bad for her. Uh. So, but, nobody's mind is able to cope with years of abuse of the psyche like this and and with no way to let it out and i applaud rochelle for how she handled it and i don't know how you know if i could have handled it the way that she did you know um but she she didn't come out unscathed though in 2012 she was diagnosed with reflex sympathetic dystrophy and wound up in a wheelchair this is a chronic disease that is known to be the most painful chronic disease known to man. And, mm-hmm. you know, that on top of PTSD, um, you know, she, she lost her career. She wound up, she wound up on lots and lots and lots of pain med- medicine, you know, and, and the change in her, she, she wound up putting on a ton of weight, like the exact opposite of what happened to Jared. And, um, and she's just in like really, really, really bad shape. And, you know, it's, I don't know anything about, um, reflex sympathetic, um, uh, dystrophy. Mm-hmm. I don't know if it can be brought on by like stress or whatever, or if it was just something that was going to happen regardless, but still the timing couldn't have been worse, yeah. you know, and not to mention like serious PTSD. And, um, you know, she had lost her career and the, you know, meanwhile, Jared's living this wonderful life. I mean, he had just gotten married and he was living it up. You know, Jared by 2013 had made over 300 commercials and he was worth $15 million and his legend was growing. And that's just $15 million from Subway, not, not from the money that he laundered off of his, um, you know, supposed charity. Yeah, man. He's still an asshole. Yeah. <laughs> it seemed like it seemed like she had ruined her entire life literally for nothing. Yeah. Yeah. And and you know 
<coughs> yeah, switching gears now, going back to 2006. Jared had hired a band named Russell Taylor to run the Jared organiz- the Jared Foundation. Now, this guy was shady. He mm-hmm. was a hustler and a manipulator who could always get what he wanted. Jared, on the other hand, was not that guy. So he wanted to have somebody who could. So Russell was Jared's man who could get things. <laughs> little Shawshank Redemption uh, reference yeah. there. <laughs> <laughs> Great movie, by the way. Oh, yes. Very good movie. So they, they had met at one of Jared's events. And at the time he was working for the American Heart Association. So he wrote a speech for Jared free of charge. And it seems to me like he may have had um, plans for the Jared Foundation. Mm. Yeah, the, the speech went very well and Russell was in. Once they hit the road together, that's where all the fun stuff started. They would do their good guy stuff during the day, promoting healthy eating and exercising. But at night, it was booze, strippers, and sex workers. (laughs) All paid for by the Jared Foundation. Wow. There's where the money's going. Yep. Russell was dating a woman who he had met on Facebook named Angela. Remember I said there's two Angelas Ah, in the story? There's number two. Why can this chucklehead meet a woman on Facebook? How do you meet a woman on Facebook? I don't know. Probably. If I if I if if I friend request somebody that I don't know, it's gonna be denied. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> um they talked for a while, but in 2012, Angela and her two daughters, Christian and Hannah, ages 13 and 10, um, Yeah, what did I write here? They talked for a while, but in 2012, Angela and her two daughters, Christian and Hannah, ages 13 and 10, um, they, he moved them into his house, and they began, and the family began reaping the benefits of having lots of money. Mm-hmm. Now, Angela and her kids, they were lower middle class, and all of a sudden, they were elevated. Ooh. Russell was a bit of a film buff, and he loved making, you know, movies like, like, legit, um, very well produced good you know movies that looked really good and he'd, he'd made them off, off of you know the stuff that he had you yeah. know huh. um he had lots of high dollar gear and he made he made a movie about the the girls softball team and um you know one of the one of the daughters said it's just like it kind of seemed odd because nobody else was doing that nobody else's parents were were doing that yeah, so, but they didn't think anything of it. They they thought it was cool, and they showed a clip from it. It looked really good. Yeah, but yeah. um, but Angela's parenting style changed when she met Russell. Yeah, uh, she used to be, you know, hold on, I'll, uh, what the hell? Oh, okay. And, uh, okay. <laughs> another person, I, I thought I had screwed up on my notes again. <laughs> um, but another person who was on to Jared was Tim Evans, an investigative reporter for the Indianapolis Star. And most of his re- reporting was on sexual abuse cases. You know, Angela had gone from being a religious church person to a party animal. And she and Russell even encouraged the girls to drink and, and smoke weed and throw parties at the house. It's just a pretty, you know, drastic change there. Yeah. Um, this was in 2012. Angela had been with Russell for about two years at this point. Russell's life seemed consumed by Subway, and he had more sub- Subway stuff in his house than the Subway restaurant has. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and why would and why wouldn't you? Yeah, you, you know, if if you're making that much money, I'd I'd be all about it too. Yeah, I'd have you know? like a Subway kitchen. You know, your whole kitchen's yeah. like a Subway restaurant. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, although i'd put i'd put if i had that that set up i'd put pubs of food into it oh yeah have to pubs up (laughs) um russell was constantly traveling not just nationwide but worldwide too and he would take angela and the girls on these trips as well 
Uh, it was on one of these trips when the girls met Jared for the first time and he was shy. And when they, you know, he was shy when they met and Jared, Jared, Jared had Russell and be, and by default, Angela and the girls under his thumb oh. at this point. It's kind of like that quiet, evil mastermind, you know? Hmm. Not, not the type that's gonna, you know, not like a James Bond villain, but yeah, a little more sinister. Yeah. Like the last person you'd ever see coming, he's gonna be quiet and everything. You know, what it reminds me of. Do you remember those Saturday Night Live skits about um, Ronald Reagan during Iran Contra and testimony? It, Ronald Reagan was played by, I believe, it was Phil Hartman. Yeah, and and it was just like in 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 court they would be like um like Ronald you know Mr. Mr. President what happened here and he's I I don't remember I ah, you know my man yeah. is kind of fuzzy and um and then then it would show him like in the Oval Office all right people we've got to get down to business <laughs> <laughs> it was a great skit it was a great skit <laughs> Phil Hartman all right rest in peace Phil uh, Hartman uh, right. <laughs> Oh, rest in peace, that guy. Ah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but it, I, it's kind of you know Jared, you know Jared's persona, like when he's meeting new people and stuff like that, is all timid and quiet. But then mm -hmm. behind the scenes, he's just this freaking monster. Mm -hmm. That just made me think of that Ronald Reagan skit by <laughs> Phil Hartman. <laughs> uh back when saturday night live was good yeah when it was like oh, yeah good material <laughs> yeah <sighs> saturday night live can if, if saturday night live wants to sponsor us i love the current saturday saturday night live mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. i'm starting i'm starting to see this as a movie now this is it making like a a movie yeah it, a it does have that vibe to it doesn't it yeah yeah not on a hallmark yeah, it really camera. does no <laughs> netflix oh, wait no the lifetime channel you know that some of those movies on those lifetime channels man are freaking disturbing yeah that they're all like men are evil and just want to kill you that that's every that's just that's it that's every that's every lifetime movie exactly. <laughs> yep yeah and the way that the actors spoof the bit the you know the villain in the story is just so over the top <laughs> uh. <laughs> one time hannah had a friend that was 15 years old and russell russell wanted jared to meet this girl so she and this friend went to dinner with Jared, and at, gen at dinner, Jared was just his normal, shy self, kind of like Ronald Reagan in court. Well, I don't remember. So Jared's probably just like, "Yeah, eat Subway." <laughs> yeah, me and Ellis tuna sandwich. I, I, I got, I got a, I got a six inch for you to eat. <laughs> right. Oh, uh, ah, God, damn it! No, that was nasty. Yeah. <laughs> But you know he was thinking it. Yep. Can't <laughs> avoid it. <sighs> Still like being on the show there, Paul? <laughs> I'm just, hey, it's a ride, man. It's a ride. <laughs> I'm just coasting, man. It's a roller coaster. <laughs> Ro roller coaster of smut. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh god um but after the dinner jared was excited when he was talking to russell about wanting to see her again and he and he would text russell about how hot she was and how he wanted to have sex with her and the girls thought it was just guys having perverted conversations like like a pervy uncle who ran his mouth but would never actually do anything you know yeah not that that's okay but it happens Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, you grab him right in the pussy, <laughs> right? <laughs> what, what, what movie was that? 
I'm trying to think. That was Donald Trump. Oh yeah, but there was there was a <laughs> there was there was something not long before that. There was some was there a movie. Ah oh, crap, I can't think of it. It was like something Revenge the, Revenge the of guy, the Nerds. I think so. Grab my pussy. Grab my pussy. It would sit like really quick. Grab my pussy. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Maybe that's what Trump was quoting when he said that in that in that clip that went viral about him. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe. I don't know. I, I don't know what movie it was. I'd, I'd have to I'd have to watch the movie or at least at very least see the the cl- a clip of it to put it yeah. into context. I know what um I know what Trump said when you know when he said it. I know the context. Well, I I know how he said it. I can hear it, him saying that in my in my head, but yeah, I yeah. don't know how it was said in that movie, so I don't know if they were if he was just yeah, I I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> But and that's about as political as we get on this show. Yeah, <laughs> which is, it's that wasn't even really political. That could have been anybody. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It just happened to be a guy who would become president. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, Hannah actually told the friend about this, and the friend was like, "Ew, why the hell are you even telling me this?" Mm-hmm. And that that made Hannah feel dirty just because she realized that, you know, she she started to realize that this wasn't right, even if it was just talk, which it wasn't. Um, but she didn't know that then. Mm-hmm. Um, in 2014, Captain Chuck Cohen of the Indianapolis State Police got a call from a state trooper that he knew. The trooper said that he had a friend who had been talking to somebody who had been sending bestiality pictures through email and text. Oh. Um, he got he got detectives to to look into it to find out what this was all about. And possession of bestiality photos is not a crime in Indiana, but the act of making said pictures or videos is. So he wanted to see if they could take down the people in the photos. So they they tracked down where the communication came from, and it was it came from none other than Russell Taylor. Mm. The first, the first Nick in Jared's armor came from a fucking bestiality picture. Wow. Yeah. That was what I've gotten an actual law enforcement, you know, that was actually going to do something about it onto yeah. the case. <laughs> Man, that sounds kind of counterproductive, too. You know, honestly, in, I'm, I'm in surprised Indiana, that, you know, it's not allowed. It's not illegal to have pictures, but but I'm like, what? Well, it's, well, I mean, it, it, I think it's, I think it's like that in a lot of states though. Mm -hmm. But, but the, but then again, the thing is, um, that could have come from anywhere. You know, I, I'm surprised. I'm not, I'm not knocking the officer that decided to go look into it because good on him but um but still it's just like you know i I was scrolling through twitter one time and you know how like twitter will put up picture you know like posts from people that you don't follow yeah you know, just random feed and everything one time i was scrolling through there and i found a you know a, a, a really crap video it looked like it came from japan of a of a girl getting fucked doggy style by a dog whoa and that just came up on fucking Twitter. Yeah. You know, it was, it was Twitter, not X, but still it's just like, so my, my, my point is it's just like, I'm surprised that he went th- through with it. It's just like that stuff could be so random, you know, just it could have come from anywhere. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I just so for him to saw speak. something on, on Facebook. I think it was today. I saw something on Facebook and, and it was on a, it was on a podcast group, a public prod podcasting group. I know what you're talking about. I think I saw the exact same thing. And you saw like it, the, it, the women on there. I'm like, what? Yeah, it, it was a hacked. It was a hacked. Um, a hacked account from somebody, and it was like it. It, it was like a, um, an ad for some type of like, um, like so, some sort of like sexual enhancement drug or something like that, and yeah. it had actual porn video being played. Yeah. Yeah. Meanwhile, meanwhile, if I say something, if I say something naughty about, um, <clears throat> you know, uh, about somebody. Then I get banned by a, for a month. 
But meanwhile, this shit gets up there and nothing happens. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, So (laughs) Zuckerberg, you can bite me. (laughs) At least, at least Elon Musk was trying to put a stop to shit like that. Mm -hmm. Zuckerberg's not. No, no. Now he's got his own farm growing beef and eating (laughs) it all. Hope you choke on your beef. (laughs) (laughs) So in 2015, a search warrant was issued to search Russell's house for evidence of bestiality. While there, they found that and a lot more. There was an adult female in the pictures with an animal. And and guess who? It was Angela Taylor, Russell's wife. They also found... um, Hidden cameras all throughout the house, specifically in Hannah and Christian's rooms. Um, <clears throat> the police found more than 500 explicit photos and videos of children. Some of the pictures of were of Hannah and Christian themselves, like changing, and you know, uh, the, uh, you know, Russell was actually recruiting underage girls for child porn, and they didn't even know it. And it's wow. like they would let they would let these teenagers come over and party and everything and drink and all that stuff. And of course they're going to go off and have sex. So they had videos of that too. And some, some videos even had Russell plowing a teenager. Um, yeah. And you know, Russell said that the cameras were to prevent theft, but the camera angle said otherwise, (laughs) you know, (laughs) um, some girls, you know, undressing others, uh, had, had, you know, showed, showed like teenagers having sex. Um, some of it was even without consent. I mean, there were, there was videos of like teenage girls being raped by other teenagers. There was girls, there was video of Russell raping teenage girls. Yeah. Hannah and Christian were watching, every, you know, being watched every minute of the day when they were at home and they had no freaking clue. but they had been being groomed from the moment that they moved in with Russell and you know, he and Angela were letting them drink and party 12 years old. Russell had told Hannah that she should be having sex and exploring her body. Hannah said no. And then the next day there was a dildo waiting for her on her bed along with a laptop with a, with his porn site pulled up. What? Obviously with the cameras, the, the hidden cameras rolling. Yeah. Jeez. When Russell was arrested, both Jared and Subway released statements. Jared said that he had no knowledge of Russell's crimes and he was shocked by it and he had severed all ties to Russell. Mm. Subway, they had no affiliation with Russell or the Jared Foundation and they were disgusted by the claims and they were glad that Jared took quick action to sever ties to Russell. (laughs) Mm. Just, (coughs) yeah, nothing. Just like, nope, just passing the book. No, 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 no. 12, 12 victims were identified and the text messages were seized and, and read. Russell had sent a picture of a naked girl to, to Jared. Russell bragged that in the text, Russell bragged that he had tag teamed that girl. Didn't say who he had tag teamed with. Although no. I'm pretty sure you probably figured that out. Yeah. It wasn't Jared, but um <sighs> Jared could have gone to the police and reported that, but he didn't. What he did do is he asked when he would get a chance to pound that girl. Oh, man. And this was when the investigation into Jared by, you know, the state of Indiana began. Um, Russell said that some of his involvement, you know, some of his criminal involvement was due to Jared wanting child porn. Right. (laughs) If anything... I don't, I don't know. I, this is a chicken or the egg scenario. Yeah. Which came first, Jared, the pervert or Russell, the pervert, which was first. You they know. coexisted until. They yeah. I think, I think they, I, I think met up. I, they were twin flames. Yeah. 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 Probably. Wouldn't be surprised if when Jared as a high school kid or, um, or a college kid was, you know, while he was still like morbidly obese, I wouldn't be surprised if he was like looking up kitty porn sites and stuff. 
Probably. I don't know. I'm, yeah, I'm just I speculating. Mean, he may have been always into it, you know? It's just something, Yeah. you know? And as he got the fame and ego and stuff, he just thought he had the power to now control it. Yep. So they got a search warrant to search Jared's home July 7th, 2015 at 5 a.m. They raided the home, and it was supposed to be a secret. In fact, the officers doing the raid didn't even know whose house they were raiding. <laughs> they just knew that they were looking for child porn. You know, but somebody leaked information to the the media, and the next thing you knew, there were news vans up and down the street, helicopters flying th- all through the air, all reporting that Jared's house was being raided. Um, it made national news immediately, and I I remember the news. Yeah, and and what it and also what police was looking for was leaked as well, and the nation was shocked as a result. And now the two segments come together. One person in particular who was um, <clears throat> who was was shocked by all this was Rochelle Herman, and she she had found out when everybody else did on TV, and she contacted the Sarasota ABC affiliate, and at first they um, they thought she was crazy, but a reporter called Rochelle, and she told him the story, and the reporter did some investigating, you know. Some reporters still do investigate these days, believe it or not. Mm, Yeah, dumb. Dumb. But he felt comfortable that she was telling the truth. So he interviewed Rochelle, and this interview went national. And um, (laughs) the the public was waiting to, to hear... The public was waiting to hear what was was found out in the house, but Rochelle's interview was a couple days later, Mm. obviously. But... Text messages showed that Jared had spent twelve thousand dollars a year on sex workers, and when he showed up in a town, he would ask, he would contact sex workers that he had used before, and he would ask in text messages if they had access to underage um, sex workers. He offered, this is all in text. He offered finders fees if any of them could bring him a child, and he was successful on multiple occasions. So, so right off the bat, he's charged with crossing state lines to have sex with a minor. That's a felony. Yep. You know and. That that's a paddling. <laughs> <laughs> Simpsons did it. <laughs> oh. Crossing state lines to have sex with a minor. That's a paddling. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> oh man. Uh. <laughs> oh man. Uh, uh, okay. And- yeah, and the first two they found were in New York City. They went, yeah, yeah they went there from. I bet he took the subway. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! <laughs> <laughs> um, they charged him with conspiring with Russell Taylor to distribute and receive child porn and victimizing vic, vic, victim victim victimizing. <sighs> prostituted minors in New York. <laughs> Deep. One one of my co-hosts' ex, um, side duties is to bail me out when I get tongue-tied. <laughs> now, for those keeping score at home, his house was raided in July 2015, and he pled guilty in August of 2015. Mm. <laughs> The thing is, is up until 2015, there was only one person saying that they should go after this puke and the FBI tossed her away like garbage after they were finished with her. And they did absolutely nothing with the information they forced her to obtain. Yeah, that's that. Yeah. All that all this information that they have, they they just sat on it. it. Yeah, from Rochelle. Yep. Bullshit. And meanwhile, Rochelle's life is ruined as a result, you know, for freaking years worth. Yeah. And I just. You know what? Round of applause for um, for Rochelle here. Yeah. And Ro- Rochelle, if you happen to hear this this episode, God bless you. Yes. <laughs> God bless you. And the vulgarity that the uh, the yeah. feds feds had on this it's bullshit. Yeah, I don't know if I don't know if I could have done that. I no, I couldn't have. No. 
Yeah. So if people who had worked closely with Jared, they had no idea. Um, his wife and his kids had no idea. This guy led a double life even better than BTK did. <laughs> uh, it, his wife immediately filed for a divorce and sought custody of the kids. And she also denounced Jarek in, in public at a news, at a press conference. <laughs> it also came out that on three separate occasions, subway employees had filed harassment charges against Jared and, and sub and subway did nothing. What? Subway, of course, denies this. Hmm. Jared was evaluated as having a sex, a sex addiction. Jared was evaluated as having a sex addiction. Duh. Uh, uh. (laughs) (laughs) His, his attorneys said that he traded his food addiction for a sex addiction and that he could be treated for it and recover. One prosecutor said, you don't go from being addicted to food to all of a sudden being sexually attracted to children no and if i and if i had a mic drop sound effect i would play it right there but yeah. I'm, I'm not going to drop this microphone hell no if it was a sure sm58 i might but right <laughs> <laughs> those things are indestructible yeah. <laughs> but but uh, but not 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 this not, not that this. one not that one and not yours either. That, no, yours is a sure, but it's not an SM58. <laughs> right. Right. So, yeah. A witness for the defense said it was mild pedophilia. If that's mild, I'd hate to see what that chucklehead uh, thinks was mild. major. Yeah. That ain't mild. Holy crap. Jeez. Um, prior to being sentenced, uh, uh, mild pedophilia, I would say, because you know, remember earlier we said it's not illegal to have those thoughts. It's only illegal if you act on them. Mm-hmm. I would say mild pedophilia would be somebody who had those thoughts but didn't act on them. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Anything else is not minor. Well, it, it, it is minor. Yeah. It, it's it's with minors, but it's not. that's not minor. Anything other than just having the thoughts and not acting on them, that's not minor. That's major. Correct. And we don't know how long we don't know how you know how long ago even though he's been you know talking about this and stuff like that yeah how long has it actually been happening where he's actually been doing it yeah. other than you know, how. at what point did it go from being minor to major how old was he when did that happen did it what i mean i seriously doubt that it happened while he was still a huge tub of lard so you know i i would say that the first time it happened was probably after he became jared from subway yeah you know, I don't know because unless, otherwise, unless there was another, unless there was another fat chick in school or something like that, that I, I don't know. <laughs> but he likes little boys too. Yeah, he likes little boys too. Uh, don't forget that. But um, prior to being sentenced, um, Jared made a statement, and you can read that if you want. I didn't put that in red, but you can read it. Oh, he said, I have to become dependent on alcohol, pornography, and prostitutes. Not a day will go by where I don't, won't think of the victims. I hope restitution will help in their lives. It is my intent to learn from these experiences so that I never, ever do these things again. I take full responsibility for what I've done. Yeah, I bet he, I bet he thinks about the victim victims every day. Right. <sighs> Sick uh, fuck. Yeah. I don't know if he was sincere or if he was putting on an act, but I'm leaning toward the latter. Yeah, yeah. He would have he would have totally kept going if he hadn't been caught. He, totally. He would have mm-hmm. totally kept going. He'd still be, if he had never been caught and was still Jared from Subway today or some other or like some other big thing or whatever hell he he, he could probably have been an uh, a-list actor by now oh yeah probably. he'd still be he'd, yeah. he'd still be doing it yeah yeah i still can't believe it's been like 10 years now i mean almost 10 years but nine years i wonder if like, i wonder wow. if he ever went to Ep- Ep- i wonder if he ever went to epstein island oh yeah it's a good question it's a good question uh, he might be on that list hurry up and release that they need yeah. to hurry up and release that. I, I wouldn't be surprised if he was on that list. Him and Russell. Right. Yeah. Yeah. They had the money for it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Did you hear that um, Epstein Island 
just got sold and um the the person that bought it is gonna is gonna put a resort up there really like an, a, an actual legitimate resort you know mm. turn something horrible into something beautiful mm. hey more, more power to him yeah <laughs> yeah yeah mm. i mean you know i i i would i would go to that island as a legitimate resort if i had oh, the money yeah yeah i'd go as a paranormal investigator i'll be i'll be looking for all kinds of crazy shit well that's true <laughs> that's true <laughs> That place probably got a lot of freaking crazy energy on that place. I bet it does. Yeah. But nobody was killed there that we know of. That, that we, we know, know of. of. That we know of. Yeah. yeah. Although Epstein did not kill himself. Yeah. We know that. <laughs> 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 oh, yeah. <laughs> Jared was sentenced to 15 years and eight months in prison over three years more than what prosecutors had thought had, had sought and three times what, um, and three times what Fogel had requested. Hmm. So he got 15 years. Yeah, it was Thank three you. times more. So he, 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 he said that he deserved five years. Really? Jeez. Yeah. So he thinks in threes too. Huh. <laughs> uh, so you mm. can't do three weeks of BTK and still not have him on your mind. Yeah, right. I don't know. Maybe he was part of that fact, now, it, it, factor it, it, X or something. I huh. bet. Yeah. Mm. I can see BTK tied Jared up. <laughs> 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 There you go. <laughs> Early on, we used to do like serial killer on um, deathmatch promos. Might have to do one. What if, BTK. What if, he, what if he can get AI? What if he can get AI to create a photo of that BTK tying up Fogel? I'm sure. I'm sure of it. <laughs> <laughs> AI will go. AI will go. Who's Jared? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. So, um, the judge suggests, you know, stated that the level of perversion and lawless, lawlessness exhibited by Mr. Fogel was extreme. So to give him three years more than what the prosecutors had initially thought. Still, I think 15 years isn't enough time. He had 14 known victims. There's probably a lot more. Yeah. Yeah. I do. I, mean, I do like five or 10 years per count per victim life. Sentence. Yeah. And, and I wouldn't be surprised if while he was overseas, you know, you've seen the movie Hostel. Oh yeah. I wouldn't I wouldn't be surprised if he engaged in something like that. Yep. It's just the way he so nonchalantly, matter of factly talks about, you know, hurting kids. Yeah. But mm. <clears throat> Rochelle's you know, Rochelle's tapes had a lot to do with um with the because it, it's rare for the the um the judge to say, okay, well, the prosecutors said 12 years. I'm upping that three. That, that doesn't happen very often, yeah. but Rochelle's tapes had a lot to do with that. They were allowed to be played in court Whoa. during his trial. <laughs> so, um, Russell Taylor got 27 years and he, and he turned state witness against Jared. Oh man. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> If as if it couldn't get any worse, it's going to get worse. <laughs> as of 2020, Angela Taylor hadn't been charged, but in 2020, the, the case was reopened and text messages between Angela and Russell had been discovered. Angela said that she wanted to have sex with her daughters and she wanted to let Russell have sex with them as well. And she was, she had been watching them on the cameras along with Russell. And in 2021, Angela was convicted of sex crimes and she got 33 years because of being a willing and gleeful participant, participant in her own da daughter's molestation. Wow. Hannah and Christian even testified against her. Holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> so, but 
Christian now has a daughter of her own, and she loves her the way that a mother should love her daughter. Rochelle's son and daughter struggle with what happened. Her son moved to Taiwan and never came back to the U.S., which is why in the documentary I thought his voice was kind of odd. Mm-hmm. It's because he spent so much time in Taiwan and developed an accent. Oh, okay. Huh. So I was like, he sounds kind of weird. I mean, not not in a bad way. It's just it just did not sound like a a voice that came out of a native Floridian. Yeah, yeah. You know, no, you, yeah. You spend you spend a lot of time in some countries. A lot of time you start to develop mannerisms. I do yeah. that if I walk into an Irish pub. <laughs> Fifteen minutes, I'm I'm speaking with a British accent. <laughs> <laughs> but her her son is proud of Rochelle, and Angela is taking baby steps to um to try and get you know you know process everything that happened and everything. You know, R- Rochelle is the hero of the story, and so it, and so are um, Hannah and Christian. Hmm. Hannah said that she had never that she, at, the, at the time that the documentary was made, she hadn't met Rochelle, but she was grateful. I wouldn't be surprised if they've met, you know, since the documentary was made. I wouldn't be surprised yeah. if they if they've met. In fact, I'd bet on it. No, I... <laughs> never mind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me and betting is not a... me betting isn't a good idea. Go Packers! <laughs> Go Packers! Yeah, that game's mm-hmm. starting right about now. <laughs> I don't care. Oh. I just, I just want to see. I just want to see the final score. Uh, right. Go Packers! <laughs> you ought to have that. You ought to have a plan on your side screen there that we. I could I could do that. <laughs> I could easily do that. But 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 the the stream it might take away from the my internet signal from this. So I'm oh, not going yeah, to. Yeah. And I and I can't see my TV from where I'm sitting because of how I've got everything set up here. So ah. So Jared, according to TMZ, two years into his sentence in January of 2017, Vogel was reportedly reportedly got his ass kicked by a fellow inmate. <laughs> um, a guy named Stephen Nig. Um, he pushed him down and unloaded a barrage of punches to his face. And, you know, it, he had to hit him. And that, that, that's how the whole thing started. That was a quote from Nig's brother, Jimmy. He told People Magazine, he, he, just, he just doesn't like child molesters. Yeah. <laughs> He continued that Steve, Steve, he's like, he's like, I can't figure out why you would want to do that to kids. <laughs> so good, good on you there, Steven. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I, I, I really hope that he's somebody's bitch. <laughs> oh yeah. 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 But, um, I mean, I mean it, a lot of people know that, you know, if you ever go to prison, just make sure the crime you committed was not against women or children. Cause you will get yep. your ass kicked. Or killed. Yep. Get domered. Yeah. <laughs> God, the guy that took out Jeffrey Dahmer. There was a podcast that did a um episode on that guy. As a um as he was the subject of the entire episode. Yeah. And nobody, you know, the the co host didn't know the the name. Yeah. And then at the very end, um, you know, at the very end. You know, well, like leading up to the thing in the 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 bathroom at the the prison where yeah. he killed Dahmer. He's that's when he, the host dropped the ball on the co-host, or dropped you know dropped the came clean with the co-host about who they were talking about. And the co-host was like, "Holy crap! I had that that that's the, that's the guy that killed Dahmer." <laughs> <laughs> I shouldn't have told you that because I could have done the same thing to you. Damn it. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Jared in a letter that was obtained by the New York post said, I very much look forward to restarting my life and, and I'm j- enjoying every moment with my family who have stood by and supported me. I am so lucky to have them. What family? 
I, I haven't seen any evidence of family standing by him. His wife divorced him. Yeah. His kids want nothing to do with him. His parents and si- siblings haven't been reported to go to going s- to see him as far as I know. To me, yeah. this sounds delusional. That is delusional. Yeah, his family left him. I mean, it just yeah. What yeah. like uh, yeah? What what family? Or it it all in his head. Like yeah. I've... I mean, I I don't know. I I haven't seen. I, I looked. I haven't seen any you know information stating that um that he was going you know that his family like his parents or his siblings had come to see him i yeah. i hadn't seen that anywhere and i looked hmm. so yeah i don't buy it yeah me neither he, he's delusional yeah maybe he's now suffering from um um schizophrenia botulism botulism and <laughs> Yeah, no, all right mm. i can't promise there won't be any more btk references but <laughs> that, that series that series uh, uh, that series was like a weight off my shoulders because of how horrible those the original two episodes I, I'm, I'm like shouting it out like i'm shouting it to the world i did btk the right way <laughs> <laughs> so uh anyway but that's it that's the that's the story of jared the subway pedophile i mean guy mm-hmm. so. <sighs> yeah yeah that was a deep one man didn't, i tell you that uh didn't know yeah. didn't know that was coming <clears throat> yeah there's a lot didn't of no that was coming. i did not know i did not i'm like yes. what yeah same here uh, yeah i just knew the i just knew the basics yeah <laughs> and yeah. i thought that i thought it was going to be an episode oh we'd get to rag on you know rag on a pedophile mm-hmm. i honestly thought that that's what we were going to do nope Mm-mm. that was that was that was like psychological yes yes and and i'm not and i'm not even making fun of todd when i say that this would that this episode would have broken him i'm not even making fun of him i'm i'm saying that because he is you know he's my friend and i know him Mm-hmm. you know <laughs> yeah i mean he would yeah, not have, he would... Like, yeah you have to respect that too and it's like man and i respect mm-hmm. it too i respect todd for not not wanting to to cover well he, he didn't he didn't know he didn't know any more about this episode about this this case than i did yeah well it's just, we fact, about it. just for the fact that you know it's there's pedophilia involved in it and he I, he's like i'd rather not have to sit and yeah. listen to and have to reply to something other than saying that's fucked up, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, but. which it is, it's really, it is very really fucked up. And I, I tell know. you what, for um, those who, and, and for, and when it comes to anything, when it comes to children, you know, for those who haven't and not free marketing or anything, have you seen the sound of freedom? The movie, the sound mm-hmm. of freedom good movie no, i haven't good movie it's about the bust of hundreds and hundreds and saving hundreds if not thousands of children all o- all over the world of uh child oh, wow yeah it's really check good. that out i've heard of the movie I, I know the name of the movie i just hadn't yeah. seen it but anyway um yeah if you lasted this long thank you for listening <laughs> oh yeah <sighs> that was a rough one <laughs> yes it was so yes it was yeah. And next next week we got we get we got a crazy one for you next week. <laughs> Not uh, yeah. Well, it's it's just it's just a crazy one. And it's from Florida. So <laughs> yeah. So um but thanks a lot for listening and check us out on you know follow us on social media and everything. Everything will be checked out on you know on the episode notes and whatnot. And Thanks. <laughs> yeah. Thank you all for listening. Uh, like, share, subscribe, follow. Don't forget to comment and um, listen to uh, listen to us wherever you listen to your podcasts. And until then, we will see you next time. Till next time. Later. Later.